welcome to another edition of Tech Tuesday presented by Delta Media Group, where the breakaway Christmas hit of the year, as we all understand, actually stars Mel Gibson as Santa Claus, of all people. Right? Right? All right. So today, we're going to take a look at the customer profile page in the DeltaNet. So this is kind of your one-stop page that gives you all of the information for a particular customer. Um, now, there are a few ways to get there. Um, for one, and the easiest way, is I can just go up here to the search bar and type in my customer's name or their email address. And you can see they pop up right here in the list, and I can just click View Customer Profile to get to their profile page. Um, now, the other ways I could go about getting there would be if I click on CRM here, there might be an option to um, edit or manage customer. So you see we have Manage Customer right here. Um, this can be customized on a per company basis, so you may not have this tab. Um, the other way you can get there is we can go to CRM, we could go to Customer Center, and then from here, if they are a customer with recent activity, they'll be in this hot new customer section, or all of your customers will come up in this customer detailed list section. So these can be filtered, and you can bring up the customers this way also. In either case, you just click on their name, and that will also take you through to their customer profile page. Uh, or you can also go to Customer List, so if you wanted to produce a list of customers, um, based on some specific criteria, like what kind of requests they've made or how recently they made a request, then you can filter the customers on this page and then go to Actions and View Profile, and that will also take you to their profile page. So I'm going to go ahead up here and just type in my customer's name and View Customer Info. There we go, and this is the customer profile page. So we're just going to go ahead, now we've gone over this page before and some of its functionality, but we're just going to go ahead and run through this and um, you know, cover all the new functionality we've added here and just give you an idea of what you can do on this page. So first off, we have our customer profile information over here on the left. Um, from here, if you have delegate privileges or if you're a team leader, then you can delegate this customer. You can create a mortgage request for this customer if you have the mortgage system set up. Um, and what that would do is take whoever your mortgage account that would handle your mortgage leads and creates a lead for them. Um, but generally, what you'll do here is use the Edit Profile button, so we'll just click on that, and that allows me to change that customer's basic profile information. So, at first we have basic customer information, so here we can control things like their contact information, um, kind of their primary contact information is a good way to look at that. So you have name, email address, phone number, change their status, you can adjust their group association here also, so if you um, have a specific group that you want this customer to be in or you want to remove them from, so if I decided I didn't want them to be a hot customer, I can remove that. And then if I want to add them to a different group, I can just type in the group name and you can see it comes up in the autocompleter and I can add those in, so all that can be controlled here. I can control what pipeline phase there is, or what pipeline phase this customer is in, in a very similar way, just click on this field and select it here from the list. And then if I click See More Information, you can see I have some additional kind of primary contact information here. Um, so I can give them a title, an email salutation, and you can see this shows up on all the emails that go out to them instead of just using their first and last name. Um, or I should say, well, yeah, <laughs> instead of using their first and last name. This is particularly useful for accounts that are uh, shared accounts. So, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Bob Smith, that kind of thing. You can change their email salutation here. Um, and then we've added some new things here lately, like company name and job title. We've put right up here so that it is um, easier to get to and easier to set up and see for your customers. Um, the other change we've made here is birthday. Keep in mind that this is birthday and not birth date. So really the only thing of importance to pick here is the month and the day. Um, because that is the part of the system that is used to send out things like uh, birthday cards, all that sort of thing. If you have those pieces configured, it's only using the month and the day. The year doesn't really matter. And oftentimes, you know, you're going to know the month and the day of their birthday and not necessarily know their birth year. So the point is, the year here doesn't matter. So you just go here, select their birthday, and you can see it doesn't even show the year there because, again, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and then you can also set up keywords here. So if I type in um, hot customer if I can type. Now I just hit the tab key and what that did is basically set that as their keyword. So if I were to type something and then click off the field you can see it does the same thing. And it's important because that um, differentiates the individual keyword terms for this customer. And then from the customer list you can search for customers based on these keywords. So it's just another way to organize your customer database. 
The next thing we have here is transaction information. So if I open up that, uh, that section, you can see I can create a transaction here. I would just put in all the necessary information to add that in. We have postal address information, so this would be any additional addresses. So we had their, or not really additional addresses, but up here we have kind of their basic information. The first thing we have in the postal address information is an envelope salutation that would be used on um, mailing labels. If you were to print out mailing labels from the system and you wanted those to be filled out with something other than their first and last name, you would use that. And then also their primary address, so this would be their primary physical address. And then if we click see more information, you see we can add their business address and then any additional addresses. So the idea there would be, you know, if they have any vacation homes, multiple properties they're at different times a year, then you would be able to add those additional addresses in here. And then you can also label each one. Moving down here, additional contact information allows you to add in additional email addresses for this customer and then choose whether you want that email address to be copied on emails that go to this account or not. And you can also add in additional phone numbers here and any social media links. Um, now all these fields that had this green add another button will allow you to add more than what you can see here. So I can add one more email address, but if I wanted to add three or four more, I can just keep clicking this button to create more fields for myself. Same goes with social media links. So if they have their Facebook, maybe I'd paste that in here. And then if they also have an Instagram, well, I could select Instagram for the next one and paste that in here. And this is just a way to give you kind of easy access to their social media accounts so you can go in and kind of see the things they've been posting about. And then next, we have the family information section. So to set this up, I would just go in here, open this up, and then I can choose what the this person's relation is to that this particular customer account. And then I can enter all their information in here. Um, this is a nice way that I can keep track of family members and I can also uh, keep track of like family member birthdays and things so that I can automatically send out cards for those as well. Now if I close that one, we have another one here for spouse and you'll notice that with the spouse email address we can copy that, um, that email on emails that go out to this account. So the idea here is that um, you know the spouse may want to get the same email addresses that this customer wants to get and this allows you to do that and then have an email that goes out actually addressed to the spouse in addition to the one that goes out to the the primary customer attached to this account. Um, and like those other sections you can add as many family members here as you want. Just click add another family member, expand that section, and then I would choose their relation, fill out all their information, and then hit save and that'll save that additional family member also. Um, now for family members themselves, you can do child, father, mother, pet, <laughs> which is which is always a nice one. We have some pet e-cards out there for pet birthdays, uh, sibling, spouse, and then there is an option for other also. So if they don't cleanly fit into any of those categories, you can select other and fill them in that way. So there you go. That is the uh, primary profile information. So um, I would hit save changes if I wanted to save it. In this case, I just want to close it. So I have unsaved changes. Would you like to save them now? I would not, so I'm going to ca click cancel. So there we go, and then you can see in this section, it only shows the information that's filled in. So the idea is we want to keep this interface pretty clean. So though there were a lot of fields that were available for me to edit, not all of those will show up here. There we go, and there's our family members. All right, so the next section we have here is the notes section. And the idea here is anytime I contact the customer, I would want to put a note in here so I can kind of keep track of what my correspondence have been like with them. So I'm going to click add new note. And I have a little uh, sort of miniature WYSIWYG editor here that I can use to format my note if I want to put, you know, like a bulleted list or anything in there. So it just helps me uh, make my notes easier to read. And then I can also select from categories whenever I save one of these notes. So regular makes sense for most of your notes. However, if this was the result of a call you had with a customer, you could save the category as call. Um, there could also be some categories in here that are related specifically to things that the company has built out. So at the company level, custom categories can be created for these notes. And that can be nice because um, they can be used for different things later on or different metrics by looking at notes of a certain type. So you just want to make sure when you set a note that um, you, know, you set it to something that's relevant if there is a relevant category for your note. But you just type out what you want your note to be. This is my note and click done. And there we go. So that adds my note up to the top. Now, the other thing that's significant here is that you can pin a note. So the idea is that if you talk to a customer and they give you some information that you're going to want to keep in mind with every call that comes up, um, 
I can't think of a good example. Maybe <laughs> they give you some recent event in their life and you want to keep track of that so that you can kind of bring it up and mention it to them and discuss that with them. Each time you, you call them and talk to them, you want that note to stay up at the top, so you would make that a pinned note. So you can see this one is in the category pinned, so I'm going to click on edit, and you can see down here category pinned. So that's what keeps this note stuck up at the top. Now there can only be one pinned note at a time, so that's why the other one or the note we just created didn't have that pinned category available. So if I wanted to pin a different note, I would have to go in and unpin this one and pin the other one. However, the idea here is I can already edit it, so there'd be no reason for me to unpin this note and add another one. I would just click edit and then edit my pinned note and then hit done. And now my note that's always going to be pinned to the top of this list is updated with the additional information I put in there. So moving down the line, the next thing we have here is the tasks interface. Now we've recently updated this to help segment the tasks a little bit better. So here on the left we have overdue and upcoming, and you can see these are tasks related to this customer. And then from here I have some shortcuts if I wanted to call, text, or just edit this particular to-do for that customer. So if I click edit, then I can change that information out, um, you know, make it due on a different day. This is an all-day one, so I could uncheck that and make it a task for a specific time. Um, so I have all those options as far as creating those. We'll close that one out. Um, and then we've added a tab here that allows me to easily see any completed to do. So I just click on completed here, and that would show me all the ones that are done. Now, the idea here is when viewing this customer profile, if I were going through these tasks, I would just click this checkbox, and that would mark that task as completed. And now, if I look over in the completed tab, there it is. And then, if I wanted to add a brand new task for this customer, I can just click add task. You can see the customer is already selected. Then I just set my date and time whether I want it to remind me or not. Um, I can have it be a repeated task if I want to, so I have options for how often it repeats and how long I want it to continue to repeat. And then I just put in my action and my notes and click Add, and that would add in my new task. Now the next piece we have here is we have updated the Market Watch and Save Search interface so that it's a little bit easier to read those. Um, so here we have two save searches in a Market Watch. If I wanted to add a new one here. I could use either of these buttons, add a market watch or add a safe search, and that interface is going to be the same as I'm used to. So if I click add a market watch, it has me select all this information, and we have market watch videos that cover this more in depth. Um, but that interface is exactly the same. Add a safe search would take me through to the, the search page where I would actually do the property search. So that part hasn't changed. Just the display of these has changed. So now they're a little bit easier to read, and if I want to see more information on them, I can just click details, and this opens up what is essentially the card that used to be in this section. Um, so it gives you some more details about the save search, along with the option of having myself copied on it or automatically adding new listings to the customer's saved listings whenever new listings are found by this save search. And then I have my buttons to delete or edit if I wanted to change this save search. Now these are just duplicates of the buttons here. So we also have those buttons right here on the surface as things that um, you may commonly want to use. So it's more of a convenience thing. So we have them here and then keep them on this card as well. So that's for saved searches. Now for market watches, it is much the same. If I click on details, this is the card that used to appear. So here I can control the frequency of my market watch. Um, by default, those will generally go out monthly, but I can set them to go out semi-annually, quarterly, bi-weekly or weekly as well if I wanted to. And I also have an option to copy myself on these emails. Um, and then like those extra buttons that are available on this display here, I can edit, delete, again, either from right here or from this detail card. Um, now for market watches, I also have the option of sending if I wanted to fire that off immediately, and preview if I wanted to click that and just see what the market watch is going to look like, either in the browser or by sending out an email. So moving down the line, the next piece we have here are saved properties. So these would be any properties that this customer has saved, but this can also relate to transactions. So using this dropdown, I can see customer favorites. So this would be everything that the customer has saved as a favorite property on the website, or anything that I've saved for them. Now I can also see listings I've shown can be added in here. So the idea would be if I show this customer a property, I can click on add a saved property, and we're going to make that listing I've shown. And then I'll just put in my address or MLS ID and that brings up my autocompleter here, and then some comments. And then save that, and this is an easy way that I can keep track of all the listings I've shown to this customer. So I can go listings I've shown, and there you have it. Um, in addition to that, 
I can add or properties that the customer is interested in buying or selling on here as well. And then I could filter this list down to those. Um, and it can show any open houses or any properties where this customer has attended an open house as well. And it pulls that information from Open House Connector. And we'll just go to add a saved property and you can see the other types here attended an open house so I can put those in manually. Customer interested in buying so I can put that information in. Um, right now this is mainly looking at whether or not they're interested in buying it and not whether or not they actually have. <laughs> but if they have, you can put in the transaction date here, and that essentially builds this out as a transaction also that will be saved to this customer. So we'll close that one out. Now the next piece we have here is the Save Transactions interface. So this one will show all of those things that have come in as transactions. So if I were to put in a transaction date for a transaction I add in the Saved Properties section, the system would put it over here automatically. If I went to the customer's profile, and as we looked at, there's a transaction section in there. If I had entered a transaction there, that would also add it here to the Save Transaction section. Or I can just click Add a Transaction, and I can put all that information in here manually as well. And this is transaction date, transaction price, um, whether it was a purchase or a sale, um, and then all the standard information about the transaction. In addition to that, I can put some more information down here, or not really put some more information, but I can select some options down here to automatically request a review from the customer, either via email or via a text message. So it's kind of a convenient way that I can enter the transaction and then at the same time say, well, I want to I want to have them also submit a review. So I'll send them an email and a text message asking that they send me a review and then hit save. Now the SMS message portion of this and actually really anywhere where the SMS messaging comes up is reliant on you having set up a virtual phone number on your profile page. So um, all of those options are kind of assuming you've already done that and we do have another video that covers the specifics of setting up a virtual phone number. So moving down the line here, the next piece we have is campaigns. So these are all the campaigns available to you in the system and that customer's relation to any of those campaigns. So we can see in many cases whenever there's an add button here that means they're not in the campaign. I could click the add button if I wanted to add them. If there is an individual campaign that they're opted out of, it will show that they're opted out. Um, where that's particularly significant is, let's look at this holiday campaign for example. I could set up a holiday campaign and I could automatically have all of my customers added to it. So any new customer or any existing customer automatically goes into that campaign. However, maybe I just have this one customer that doesn't want to get those emails. I could leave it so that everyone is opted in automatically and then just go to this page and click this opt button in order to opt just this customer out of that campaign while everyone else still stays in there and still gets added automatically. So that's really what this opt-out functionality is for. Uh, beyond that, I can click Add if I just want to add them to an individual one or click View if I want to um, go over to that campaign page and actually see what's in that campaign. I won't click that now just because that'll take us off of this page, <laughs> so it'll save us time. Um, but clicking View would just take me over to that campaigns page. Now as we move down, the next thing we have here is the history section. So in the history section, this is basically every interaction that has taken place with this customer. Um, whether they've come to the website, looked at a listing, uh, made a request on a listing, or I've sent them an email. All of those things are meant to show up here. Now I have a few filters here that allow me to narrow this list down because, you know, generally if the customer's been in here for a while, there will be a lot of things here. So I can click on customer and just see specific things related to that customer. And if I switch to all, it's going to load up everything else. Um, again, they're all related to this customer. So this is only, you know, this customer's specific history. This is customer activity, so things that the customer has done, where all is in addition to the things that the customer has actually done, it includes automated things that the system has sent out to the customer, or things that I've sent out to the customer through the system. So that's the difference between those two filters. In addition to that, I can use this drop-down and just look at specific events. So if I just wanted to see all of the home finder emails that have gone to this customer, I can go down here and select my home finder emails, and they'll all show in this list. Now in this case, you can see that this customer hasn't gotten any home finder emails, um, but market watches they have had. So we can switch that over to market watches, and you can see all of the market watches that have gone to this customer. Uh, now the other thing that is important about this history section is that anything that has this little arrow, I can click on it to expand more information. So for things like emails, it's particularly useful because expanding it actually lets me see the email. 
Um, now for a home finder email this is particularly useful because maybe the system automatically sends them out this uh, home finder or saved search email that says we found three new properties that match your criteria and they contact us and say um, okay well I'm interested in the third property on this email well you can just go to their history page you can find that email you can expand it and then you'll see exactly what that third property is so it's a nice shortcut to see exactly what's going to the customers so there we go close that out now the next thing we have here if we move down a bit we have the messages section so this allows you to send an email to the customer if you have the virtual text messaging set up and this customer is opted in to receiving SMS messages you can use that button to send them a text message and then those correspondence will kind of go through your virtual phone number and through the Delta net so all those will show up here um, and then I can also just send a message so if I click send a new message what this is doing is making a message that will show up on the customers portfolio page so the idea is that the next time they log into the website they'll be able to see that they have a message and then if they go to their portfolio page by clicking on um, you know the button depending on what template you're using the button may say a few different things like um, they have a button that will show them how many saved searches they have um, and a number of other things when they click on those it'll take them through to their portfolio interface where they'll have a messaging box where they can see what these messages are so that is what this message is about um, send email it just opens up an email interface with a little WYSIWYG editor like you're used to and you would just fill that out or select from one of our templates to have that filled out automatically and then modify that a bit if we want to add an attachment if you'd like um, you can also have yourself copied on this message and then hit send and then I'll send out that email and log it here in this section and then last is text message which is exactly what it sounds like just click the button put in the message hit send message and that'll send them a text message and log it in this section and it will also log their reply in this section which is pretty handy now the next piece we have here is files this is another recent addition here so what we've done is given the ability to add files to a customer so you can just go to this um, this customer profile page and pull up those files later on the main thing we point out is that this is not meant to be for secured files so if there's personal information on those um, this isn't meant to handle that kind of thing uh, but to use it we would just click on add files and then this opens up this file upload window I could either click add files and that'll open up my file browser on my computer that I can select a file to put in here or I can just drag a file into this box and it'll pick that up once I put the files in I just hit start upload and that will upload those files and drop them right in here now the next piece we have here is the AVM section so this section is designed to send or set up and ultimately present reverse prospecting reports to the customer so the way this works is if the customer goes to your website and they um, use the what's my home worth functionality if that is turned on to get a valuation for a property it'll automatically drop that in here or you can use this create new prospect report option and you can put in an address and basically build this out by hand manually um, so if it is a property that is not on the market I would go here and just fill out the address it would use the auto completer to find it and then I would select it from the auto completer so there we go so there's our address there it is on the map then if I hit next step you can see it builds out the report so the reports essentially built now it shows me what we found from the records that we have for beds and baths it's not going to have that for every property so it's always a good idea to take a look at those and make sure those are correct obviously zeros are not correct for this one <laughs> so we can say you know three bedrooms one bathroom how about a partial bathroom too and then I can change out the information that shows up on this report once this looks the way I want <clears throat> I can click email to just email it out or download and it will generate a PDF for me and then once this is generated I can click this download PDF report and it'll give me a PDF of that particular reverse prospecting report and the idea is that I can print that out or ultimately send that over to them and it takes a little while to generate sometimes there we go but here we are a report that is a register um, a representation of the number of customers that the system believes could potentially be interested in this property along with the valuation I don't think this valuation is correct in particular but <laughs> we're dealing with a lot of test data here um, but there you have it it generates this report so that you can present this to the customer and say you know if we put your listing on the market now these are customers that I have access to that are in the system already that we believe might be interested in a property like yours so there we go close that one out and then from here you can also 
go through and delete these, or you can regenerate that reverse prospecting report at any time for any of the properties that have been put in here. So if I click delete, it has me confirm it, and then that one goes away. This one that's been in here for a while, I could just click prospect report, and it would open up the new report for me, where I can modify it however I'd like, and then I have the same options to either email it or print it out as a PDF. Now the next piece we have here is a widget that is specifically related to the MCFL activity. So if this customer had any MCFL activity or if the My Customer for Life system had been sending them any emails, those would show up in this section so that I can easily see exactly what emails have gone out to this customer on my behalf from that system. So it's just a nice uh, section that adds some visibility there. So there you have it. That is the customer profile page. So uh, we've added some functionality to it, we continue to build this thing out, and then as you see any pieces in here that aren't clear, or if you have any feedback on this or anything else in the Delta Net, feel free to let us know. So as always, thanks a lot for joining me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to send an email into support at deltagroup.com or give us a call, and we will help you out. Thanks a lot.